morning. Can I have the mic? That's it. Good morning, everybody. Good, you're alive out there. That's lovely. Welcome to St. John's for our uh, service of Holy Communion this morning. Uh, my name is Kim Hitch, and I'll be leading our service today. Very warm welcome to those of you here in the building. Also, very warm well, welcome to those of you watching at home uh, or wherever you may be. You are very, very welcome indeed. Uh, just a reminder for those in the building that... Um, if everything's on the screen, but if you prefer to use books, we have the yellow service books today and the green hymn books as usual. And if you like to have those but haven't got them, just wave your hand in the air and our friendly welcoming team will be very happy to come and look after you. So thank you very much. I'm just going to put mine over there. Help, helps to free up a bit of space. In a moment, we'll have our first hymn, but let's just pause for a moment of prayer to focus our hearts and minds on the Lord we've come to worship this day. Lord, thank you for this lovely day. Thank you for the freedom to meet in your name without fear. We ask that you would grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may hear your holy, holy words speak to our hearts and lives, that we may meet you as we gather around your table, and that you would in, in strengthen us to live for you each day as the disciples of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is a great hymn of praise, number 212 in the book. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning, or even mid-morning as it is now, our song shall rise to thee, and we stand to sing. We are in the season of Easter, and so we will say, share the Easter greeting, which we do three times. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. He is risen indeed, indeed. 
Would you like to sit for prayer? In the service books, we are on, I believe, page two, page two. And we pray together, saying, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. In a moment's quiet, let us bring our sins, our shortcomings to God to confess them to him as we can then confess them together and seek his grace to repent of them and his grace that we may be forgiven. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and by confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Together let us confess our sins, saying, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We're on page three of the booklets. If you're using those, would you please stand as we praise God together in the words of glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The colic for today, the third Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Would you like to sit, please, as we hear our Old Testament reading? Our Old Testament reading is from the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, beginning at verse 14. <clears throat> Sing, daughter Zion, shout aloud, Israel. Be glad, and the Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, do not fear, Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with sin. I will remove you all who mourn over the loss of your appointed festivals, which is a burden and reproach for you. At that time, I will deal with all who oppressed you. I will rescue the lame, the lamb, the lame, sorry. 
I will rescue the lame. I will gather the exiles. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they have suffered shame. At that time, I will gather you. At that time, I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Anne. In a moment we'll have our New Testament reading, but for now we're going to sing uh, one of my favourite hymns. It's number 15 in the books and on the screen, All My Gope, All My Gope, All My Hope on God is Founded. We stand to sing. Would you sit, please? Our New Testament reading this morning is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. When Peter saw the people running toward them, he said to them, Follow, Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, 
saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Fiona. Before our gospel reading and sermon, we're going to sing again. Um, It's such a shame that our vicar isn't here because, as he says, this this hymn has a deep place in his heart. Um, (laughs) If if you're you're online and wondering why people are laughing, it's that we know that um, Andrew is slightly ambivalent about his feelings about this hymn. But we can enjoy it in his absence and he can just sit there thinking, I'm not there. So there we go. The hymn is... Lord, the light of your love is shining off and better known as Shine, Jesus, Shine. Please, you like to stand to sing. the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 36. While the disciples were talking, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, why are you troubled and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe because of the joy and amazement, he asked them, 
Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lord, grant us your spirit that we may hear your word speak to our hearts and lives now. And by that same spirit, help us to live out your word in the world, being witnesses of your resurrection life to the glory of your name. Amen. Would you like to sit, please? <clears throat> you are witnesses. Witnesses. That's a theme in both the Acts of the Apostles reading that Fiona read to us and in the Gospel reading that I've just read. But let's just come back to a, a more fundamental question. Have you any Easter eggs left? <laughs> it's funny when I ask that question, everybody giggles and laughs. I'm not sure, probably you think you've got to be joking. They, all, they were all eaten on Easter Day or something like that. I'm going to be smug now because I have a packet of mini eggs still there waiting, unopened, for me to enjoy. So, <laughs> I've got one on. The reason I say that is because, it, in a trivial way, it illustrates one of the problems with Easter, Easter that eggs don't last. And there is a sense Easter doesn't seem to last, which is a serious problem when you think of how important Easter is to us in our faith, in our life. I suppose there's some encouragement that actually, if you look at the first disciples, they had the same conundrum too, that something wonderful had happened and yet are things that much different. So we shouldn't sort of feel guilty and beat ourselves up about this if we do feel this way any more than the first disciples needed to. But we shouldn't stay in that position. It's, it's, uh, we should move on, seek to move on. We need to explore this peculiarity that's there. You see, with the resurrection, it's not enough to proclaim Christ has risen as we did at the beginning of this service. It's not enough to believe in the resurrection. At some point, we have to move from the event of the resurrection, that empty tomb, the rising of Jesus that first Easter day, we have to move on from that to experiencing the resurrection today, ourselves. And that's a big jump. And experiencing the resur resurrected life begins with recognizing the risen Christ among us. That's the gift of Easter, but it's also the challenge of Easter. It's certainly the difficulty and the challenge that the first disciples experienced in today's gospel passage. Now, today's gospel passage follows on from a, a, a very well-known and quite a favorite uh, gospel passage um, called The Road to Emmaus. You may know the account. It's an account of two disciples who were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, and they were downhearted. They were fed up, and they were really puzzled and so felt so disappointed and wretched. And unbeknown to them, um, this person who is actually Jesus comes alongside them and starts chatting to them and starts to talk with them. And then they were so uh, and, and, you know, taken up with this person that they invite him into their home and say, come and stay. And, and then they recognize Jesus in the breaking um, of the bread. And those disciples there, even though it was dark, they rush back, rush back to Jerusalem, it was about seven miles, and meet the disciples there. And now, this is where, this is where our reading today begins, because all of a sudden, Jesus again shows up out of nowhere, interrupting their conversation. Peace be with you, he says. Peace be with you. 
although they've been talking about people seeing the risen Jesus, and although they see him now and they hear his voice, they still don't recognize him. They thought they were seeing a ghost. You see, they know that Jesus has been crucified. They know that Jesus died. They know that he was buried. And they know that dead men don't come back to life. So this can only be a ghost. That's the only thing that made any sense. It can only be a ghost, a spirit without a body. The tomb was open, but sadly their minds were closed. They were unable to recognize the holiness that stood before them. They were continuing to live, to think and to understand within the human limitations of thought and experience that had been with them throughout their life and most of the time had stood them in good stead. But God is not restricted by our expectations, our, our own limited experience, our own thoughts. Remember what Isaiah said. He said, speaking God's word, he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. When we do not acknowledge God's greatness to surpass all that we might conceive, when we, when we do not acknowledge God's greatness, we close our minds. And when we close our minds that way, we deny ourselves that experience of the resurrected life for which Christ died. And we lose our sense of and our ability to recognize holiness in the world, in one another, and in ourselves. With Jesus' resurrection, God shatters all our human categories, especially human categories of, about God, of who he is, our thoughts and understandings of where God's life and energy are to be found, and our thoughts and understanding about how God works in the world. Resurrected life turns the world upside down. We can't understand it. We can't wrap it up. We can't control it. We can't sum it up with our intellect. Jesus' resurrection compels us to go beyond, as it were, our usual human understanding of reality and start to embrace God's great work, his new creation, not that the new creation pushes out the old. Perhaps it would be better to call it a renewed creation. Because God's new creation is breaking in through the resurrection. And this begins with touching and seeing flesh and bones, hands and feet, and eating broiled fish. Jesus said to his disciples, Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And he showed them his hands and his feet. It wasn't just Thomas who went through all that. His, the other disciples did too. And after that, he ate a piece of broiled fish. He probably would have preferred a chocolate Easter egg, but it was all that they had, a broiled fish in their presence. Ghosts don't eat breakfast. Flesh and bones, hands and feet, and eating broiled fish are the things of creation, of the natural order. That's important, that the resurrected life comes in through the natural order. Mary, a woman created by God, gave Jesus his flesh and bones and hands and feet. She also gave him the stomach that would eat the fish that God created. The very same flesh and bones, the same hands and feet, appeared to Cleopas and the other disciple on the road to Emmaus, and then vanished from their sight, and now shown up again, unannounced and unexpected, in the midst of their conversation with others. The resurrected life of Christ, it seems, does not push out what went before, but it's revealed in and through the created order. But it's not bound by that created order. God's renewed creation is breaking in through the resurrection 
So the resurrected body and life of Christ is not constrained by familiar physical boundaries. So, I mean, Jesus has a real physical human body, but it's not subject to the natural laws and time of, of time and space. It's new, or rather, renewed creation. The degree to which we keep ourselves bound by the familiar created order is the degree to which we are unable to see resurrected life and holiness in this world, God's renewed creation in this world. Behold, I am making all things new. I suppose a simple illustration was when you're, well, usually maybe sometimes when you're an adult, but certainly when you're a child, you have to be convinced that water can keep you up, keep you afloat. Your common sense says, this thing is somewhat insubstantial. It runs through my fingers. It's not going to keep me up. And, but, and if you, until you let go of that way of thinking, you're not able to experience the marvels of water. You're not able to swim. It's a similar thing there, I think. And the trouble is that we, we stay trapped on the poolside. We so often, we bind ourselves, bind ourselves to our fears, our sorrows, our losses, our runaway thoughts and distractions, our attachments and addictions to things, to people, even beliefs. And we become unwilling to let go of the poolside. We become unwilling to allow or to trust God to grow us and to change us. In binding ourselves to the old created order, we lose recognition of and the ability to live in God's new creation. And thereby, we lose our sense of and ability to recognize holiness. It's the very opposite of resurrected life. The resurrected life of Christ, the breaking in of God's new creation, reveals that all creation and every one of us is filled with God, his holiness and divinity. Nothing can bind or supersede the grace that's given us through resurrection. God's love, God's forgiveness, God's life in abundance. Remember the words of Jesus? A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. That is, I think, one of the most difficult things for us to see, believe, and embrace in our lives. It is, however, God's new reality into which we're all invited. Not in the future, not in the past, but here and now. Here and now. Christ, our God, longs to and desires to open our minds to understand the Scriptures, to understand all that's been written, spoken, and revealed about him in whatever form that happened. That's what Jesus did for his dispersed disciples, and that's what he does for us. But it's not an academic or intellectual understanding. That the disciples are witnesses doesn't mean they have all the answers. It means that they now have the life that Jesus wants to give them. They are witnesses based not on what they know, but on who they are, on how they live now, and their relationship with the risen Christ. I don't know how that actually happens. I don't know the mechanics of that any more than I know the mechanics of falling in love. But it happens. The resurrected life is not acquired, it's received. It happens when we risk letting go, letting go of the side of the pool. It happens when we risk letting go of the usual ways of seeing, living, and relating. It's not a rejection of the natural order, it's allowing the renewed natural order to open up and to reveal something more. That's what happened with the disciples, with Jesus' hands and feet, his flesh and bones, and with him eating broiled fish. They saw and they recognized something about Jesus, and in so doing, they saw and recognized something about themselves, holiness. And it's there to happen for us too. Think for a moment about a time in your life when you lost track of time. I don't mean you forgot what time it was, although you may have done, but that you were so awake, so present, that you entered a new sort of world, a new reality. Think about a time when life seemed more real than it had ever been, and you touched or tasted life in a way ne never before. 
Recall a moment when your heart opened, softened, and you knew you were somehow different. Remember that day when you sensed something new was being offered to you. Possibilities that you did not create for yourself. They just opened up. Reflect on that moment when you realized that you were okay and could start again to live. Those are the moments when Christ opens our minds to understand. They are moments of awe and wonder that leave us in sacred silence. They fill our eyes with tears. We weep not with, from sorrow or pain, but with the water of new life. They are the moments in which we say, I never want this to end. I don't want to leave this place. In each of these moments, the one who is fully alive and risen, Christ, is calling us to see and to recognize him, to join him and to discover our new life. That's who we long to become. That's who we are already and the, who we are becoming. This is resurrected life. So you can see it's a shame that Easter sometimes seems to just have been passing and gone. It's not, it's not the way it's meant to be. Let's not lose that moment we've just been thinking about. Let's not this, put this passage, this story behind us. It's too easy to come here each Sunday, pray to God, listen to the scriptures, and then return to life as usual. It need not happen. It need not be that way. So let's not let it happen. Your life is too important to let that happen. Carry this passage with you over the next week. Let it open your eyes. Let it open your heart. Let it open your mind to the life that Christ is offering you. Let it be the voice of Christ opening your mind to understand. Sit with it. Pray with it. Wrestle with it. Trust it. And as soon as, you clap, clap, as soon as you catch a glimpse of the risen Christ and of your own resurrection, tell someone. Share it. Do a WhatsApp. Phone someone up. Email someone. Tell someone about it. Because you are witnesses of these things Jesus says to us. Tell it, live it, become it. The resurrected life is yours. Easter is true today, as it was two weeks ago. You are witnesses. You are witnesses. Amen. If you're using the booklets, would you like to turn to page four? And we're going to stand to affirm our faith by saying the words of the creed. So would you stand, please? Together we say, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, would you like to sit for our prayers? And Steve's going to lead us in our prayers. Thank you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much that we're able to be here in St. John's this morning, able to meet freely with our brothers and sisters, to enjoy each other's company, to learn more about you, to encourage each other and have the privilege of speaking directly to you. We remember that image from Good Friday of the temple curtain which separated man from God being torn in two, allowing us into your presence. Thank you too for the wonderful world around us. Thank you for the different seasons, the signs of spring we're seeing and all the rich variety you've made in the world. We see glimpses of your majesty reflected in the work of your hands and we long for the day when we will meet you face to face as our creator and our father. Let us pray to the Father in Christ our Lord. We want to pray for ourselves as we sit here together this morning. Lord, you know how much we sometimes doubt, how hard we find it to be true and faithful to you. And we thank you that, as we've already confessed to you how we've let you down, we know you have forgiven us. Lord, will you give us a hunger to want to go deeper into the truths in the Bible? Open our minds to understand the scriptures and strengthen our faith and our understanding of you. We all know people who are going through tough times right now, and we take a few moments to name them silently to you now and ask that you would be close to them, comfort them, and help them in accordance with your sovereign will. We pray for our local church here at St. John's, for Andrew, Jess and their family as they enjoy a well-earned holiday, that they would have a great break and be rested and restored. We continue to thank you for bringing Kim and Beryl to us Lord, will you lead and strengthen them as they serve us. We pray for the search for a family's worker, that you would bring forward exactly the right person for this vital role and equip them for it. And we pray for next week's APCM annual meeting, there would be an effective chance to look back and forward at your work here, and that we would appoint the right people to the right roles for the positions which are up for election. And we pray too, Lord, for the events coming up this week, especially the Women's Fellowship and the Man Up evenings, that those would be fantastic opportunities to encourage each other in our Christian lives and maybe share that with others who are searching. Let us pray to the Father in Christ our Lord. And in our wider world, Lord, we continue to grieve at the many ways in which injustice and hatred prevail on earth. We long for the day when your kingdom will fully come and restore us to what we should be. We pray especially for ways to be found for the situation in Israel to be de-escalated, for justice to prevail, evil to be defeated, and peace to ensue. We continue to pray for our government leaders that you will guide them and cause them to seek you for wisdom. Finally, Father, in the week ahead, we know you're always close to us, but help us to remain close to you, to act, live, and speak as the citizens of your kingdom who we truly are. And so we say, in the name of our Saviour, let us pray to the Father, in Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Steve. 
We're going to uh, pause now to look at some of the things going on in our church life. Um, you'll be able to find a lot of this on our website. If you um, go there, you'll be able to find all this information. There's also, of course, uh, the monthly program card. The April program card is available. So if you haven't already got a copy, do pick one up before you go and take a, an extra one or two to give to your friends and neighbours to invite them to things that are going on. Now, there are so many notices, I've got a list. So there we are. Four o'clock church. Um, it's happening uh, on the 28th of April, so that's, what's that, that's, uh, is that next week? I've lost, it's two weeks' time, isn't it? Two weeks' time, so four o'clock church returns then. We pray for the, uh, sorry, Steve prayed for the Women's Fellowship, and uh, that's happening this Wednesday at 7.30 at Amanda's home. A man, a man Up is happening, oh, I missed that, what happened there? There we go, Man Up is happening fights me, it fights me. There we are. I will get that up. <laughs> this thing has something against man up, but there we are. It's on the Thursday, the 18th. Uh, <laughs> this is quite odd. Never mind. Thursday, the 18th, uh, uh, in the Freelands Tavern, and uh, guests are very much welcome too. And the thing we're discussing this time is why do bad things happen to good people? A question that's perplexed us for a long time. Moving on, I know you've been all waiting for this, Lunch and Lego. Lunch and Lego is, is uh, next Saturday at 12.30 to 2.30 here in church. Um, Lego will be provided, but you've got to bring your own lunch. I think that's probably fair. So that's this, this Saturday in church. Uh, again, mentioned in the prayers was our annual parochial church meeting, which takes place next Sunday between 11 and 11.45 here in church. It's an important meeting when we look back over the past year in our church life and we look forward to the year to come. So do pray for that meeting. Um, there will be, the papers are available online and there's a hard copy for you to see. If you have any problems, do you have a word with um, Liz or Ed, our church wardens? Um, also, nominations, I think, are still open for to serve as church warden or as um, members of the parochial church council, the PCC. So do think about that. Do come along and do pray for that meeting, please. After the APCM, we get over it with a quiz night. So that's the following Saturday, the 27th, and that's in the church hall, 6.30 for 7, and uh, do sign up for that. So it should be a lot of fun. Again, mentioned in the prayers uh, is the appointment of our new part-time families worker. This is an exciting new development in our church life. So do pray about that and do think about whether you could be the right person to, to apply for that job or if you know somebody else who might be right, do mention that there. But above all, do pray for this whole process. A lot of work's already got into it. Do pray for it as we go step by step. Uh, last but not least, we su uh, thanks for the su if you support the work of St. John's financially. That's much appreciated indeed. If you want to know more about that, do go to the relevant page online or there are details as well using the QR codes or elsewhere as well. But now, the net, I say that's last, but actually the next thing I'm going to do is publish some bands of marriage. And I believe that Sam and Sophie are here with us. I'm not sure where they are. There they are. <laughs> Lots of fingers are pointing at you, so <laughs> you can't get away. So there we go. No, welcome, very warm welcome. Let's publish your bands of marriage. I published the bands of marriage between Sam Andrew Musket of the parish of Christchurch Fremantle and Sophie Florence Kirk, also of the parish of Christchurch Fremantle. If any of you know any reason in law why these two people may not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. And this is the second time of asking. So we pray for Sam and Sophie as they prepare for their wedding day and also their married life together. May God bless them and may their life together bring blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we're going to share the peace. So would you like to stand, please? The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. 
and also with all of you who are watching uh, from home at this time. Now we're going to share the peace together. So do now share the peace of Christ with you, each, our friends and neighbours now. We're now going to sing again. Um, this this uh, hymn is not in the hymn book, so you'll need to sing it from the screen. It is called Faithful One, so unchanging. Faithful One, we stand to sing. <laughs> If you're using the booklets, we're on page six. Just a reminder that uh, if you're a guest with us today, you are very welcome. And if it's your custom to receive communion at your own church, uh, you are very, very welcome to receive it here. We're ministering communion by intinction today, which means that the wafer will be dipped into the wine before placing into your hands. If you, for whatever reason, don't wish to receive communion, don't feel you have to stay in the pews, do come forward, but just keep your hands lowered so that I know you don't wish to receive. Also, if you need gluten-free wafer, do just simply let me know, please. The Lord is here. His spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. 
And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation to sing together the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Would you sit, O'Neill, to continue in prayer? Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
If you're using the booklets, we're on page 11. We pray together. God of our salvation, you have restored us to life. You have brought us back again into your love by the triumphant death and resurrection of Christ. Continue to heal us as we go to live and work in the power of your Spirit, to your praise and glory. Amen. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our final hymn today is another great hymn of praise, number 467 in the books and on the screen, Tell Out My Soul, the Greatness of the Lord. Please don't dash off, uh, do stay for refreshments at the back of the church and talk to those you know and talk to those you don't know. And then in due course, as disciples of Jesus, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.